Alright, in this video I want to talk a little bit about boiled linseed oil and how I use it to finish my wood carvings. So this is the boiled linseed oil that I use. Uh, you can buy it at any big box hardware store, super easy to find, um, nothing in particular significant about it, but that's what I use. And um, I use it in two different ways. So one is just the plain um, boiled linseed oil, and I've got a jar of that here that I'm going to use. Um, the other is that sometimes I use this boiled linseed oil mix, and this jar has just the boiled linseed oil in it, along with a little bit of this burnt umber oil paint. So what you do is just put the um, boiled linseed oil in a jar, squeeze in about an inch of the um, burnt umber oil paint, and then mix it up really good. Uh, that's a tip that I, I read in the Mike Shipley book and uh, have seen Doug Linker talk about as well. Um, and so I want to show you just a little bit uh, of the differences between those and uh, how I apply them. So before I apply them, I want to show you a couple different things. So first of all, this is an example of a, of a carving that's been finished with the um, boiled linseed oil mix. This uh, just creates a little bit of a darker effect, and if I'm doing a natural finish, I kind of like that. I'd almost describe it as kind of a, a honey color, uh, which is a little bit different than the, 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 the the lighter color that you'll get from the from the raw boiled linseed oil. Um, this is another example, this bear, where um, the head of the bear has been finished with the um, boiled linseed oil mix. Now if I'm not going to paint something and I just want that natural woods color, I'll usually use the mix with the with the oil paint um, because it just makes it a little bit darker and uh, makes that uh, pop a little bit a little bit more. Now when I use the plain boiled linseed oil it's usually when I'm going to paint something. So this guy, um, these gnomes, they're um, covered in boiled linseed oil prior to painting. So they get a coat of just the plain boiled linseed oil and then they are um, painted. And I do this on almost all of my carvings. It kind of gives this nice kind of sheen to it. And the other thing I really like to do on my carvings is leave a little bit of exposed wood if I can so that not every surface is uh, painted. I just like that that look so you can have that reminder that it is actually wood. Um, so it has an effect on the way the, the paint takes to the wood. It doesn't bleed quite as much. Um, but it also gives kind of, I would say, like a nice sheen um, to the paint. Uh, when you do that, and then on any exposed areas of wood, it brings out the grain and the and the color of the the wood a little bit. So on almost everything that I'm painting, I'm using the regular boiled linseed oil um, prior to any of the painting. Now there are a couple times where uh, you might not want to use boiled linseed oil, or where you need to be careful about it. One thing to note is that um, the oil comes in. Uh, more on the top of the wood grain because you've got all the wood grain coming up here it'll soak in a ton on the top and and get really thick and dark so you can see for example on this bear the top of the head is pretty dark if you look at the front he's a little bit lighter now I don't really mind that effect on the bear I think it's kind of cool it looks pretty good however there's been a couple times where I've I've done this so here's an example of a couple Easter eggs that I did recently and if you look at them from the side here, you can see the kind of shapes and um, patterns that I, that I put in there. Um, if you look at from the top, especially on the spiral one, it looks a lot darker because the, the oil really soaks into that top. And to be honest, I'm not super happy with how the oil finish worked out on these. Um, in this case, I probably wouldn't do it again uh, because they came through the top. Another great example is this... Um, dog which I carved from a basswood egg and uh, I just kind of instinctively covered it in oil because that's what I've been doing before I paint and it looked horrible. <laughs> I had to come back and just shellac it over, just just completely coat it in 
really thick undiluted acrylic paint to kind of make up for that. Um, so there are times when you might not want to use boiled linseed oil, um, especially when that top grain is going to be um, a significant part of that. Uh, but on almost everything that I paint, I put the regular oil on. So what I want to do is a quick demonstration of, of how I do that. And I've got two of these little um, simple uh, wood guys here. And I'm going to do one with the regular boiled linseed oil and one with the boiled linseed oil mix. So you can kind of see side by side what that looks like in my process for doing that. So let me start with the, with the regular one here. And this is a pretty quick and easy process. So what I will do is I, I prefer to use these um, kind of disposable sponge brushes because uh, they're cheap and I can throw them away when I'm done and I don't have to worry about cleaning them up uh, or anything like that. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But So I just get a bunch of boiled linseed oil on there and I just kind of dab it on tight. Let me bring that into the center of the frame for you. Do that across the top. And I really just kind of push the sponge into there to make sure that I get oil into every nook and cranny of it. Working my way down. Uh, I, I use a um, cut up t-shirt. So the rag that I'm holding is a portion of an old t-shirt that I just cut off. And I like the t-shirt. I've used paper towel before, but I feel like the paper towel is just a little bit abrasive and, and tough. And I feel like the t-shirt is a little softer and more absorbent when I'm when I'm rubbing the carving. So I get as much as I can on one end like that. And then I just kind of pull the rest of that up and um, flip it over and do the bottom end of it now. And I just do this over the jar to try to minimize my mess. I try to keep it off the bottom of the carving. You can see I got some on there. Um, you're going to want to be careful where you set it for several days after you do this um, or it'll leak oil onto wherever you set it. I usually set it on a paper towel or an old piece of wood for a few days to dry out. But that's what I do. Cover it up nice and good and then use the paper towel to just rub the excess off. And uh, there you can see that. So compare that with the unfinished one there. And you can see it It looks like it's wet if you put, if you put it under water. Um, and it really pops out that that grain. Um, it looks it looks good. Uh, so that's one, um, and I'm going to do this one in the mix with the burnt umber. Now, it's important that you shake this up really good before you use it. So I'm going to. Um, I did shake it up a lot before. I'm going to shake it up some more. Oh, that lid is tight on there. All right. And I'm going to do basically the same thing um, for this one uh, with, the, with the sponge brush and everything. Um, the one thing I'm going to be a little bit careful of, I found that if I'm not careful, if I bunch, bump the edges with my brush or I go too deep, I might get like a clump of the uh, oil paint and then that comes across as a smear kind of on my carving. So I try to just go right in the middle and get a little bit there. Um, I've heard of people using like a blender to mix this up. I don't really have a blender that I can essentially throw away by doing that. I'm just going to take that and sponge it on the same way as I did the other. Put it on nice and thick and you can already kind of tell the darker color on that. So same process as before, just dabbing it out of there and covering the whole surface. I get one side done, I'll just Flip my rag over. Do the other side. I'm 
Now, some people do this after they paint, too, as kind of a form of an antiquing finish, and I, I haven't personally loved that when I've tried it, but uh, some people do do that, um, which is something to consider as well. I've mostly been using oil before painting, or if I want to leave something kind of unfinished. So, show you that there. And kind of a side by side, it's a little harder to see in this light. This one on the right is a little bit darker from the mix. Now, I could make it even darker by adding a little bit more oil paint in, and um, you can kind of uh, experiment with that and figure out how much you want. So that's really about it. Um, that's how I apply it. That's what it looks like and, and why and when you might use it. Um, the only other thing I'll note is I'm not going to give you advice on how to dispose of these. Um, this is dangerous. The, the oil-soaked rags can spontaneously combust. I would encourage you to do a different search or talk to somebody about how you should do that. I'm hesitant to give you advice on how you will dispose of this in your current um, situation and workshop. But suffice it to say, you cannot take this and wad it up and throw it in a garbage can. Um, if it's constricted and doesn't have airflow, uh, it will heat up and can spontaneously combust. So be careful about how you dispose that. Look for more information on the, on the jar uh, that you bought it in or check other internet resources videos for advice on that. But yeah, that's it. Pretty simple and easy process. I just keep these out of my garage and can easily run out and oil up a carving uh, whenever, whenever I need to. Thanks.